Talmud says, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? Hey everyone, so today I have something very special for you. I have two of my dear friends. We've got Dani and Razel. Dani is from Sweden and Razel is all the way from Australia. We are going to be discussing the show Unorthodox from Netflix. Just to give you a bit more information about them, they've been married for almost a year. Both like to travel, see the world. They even host a weekly vlog called Espresso Parsha, which I link to in the description. A lot of people probably have some questions. We've gotten a few questions. What did you, what did you think about the show? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was uh, difficult to watch? Was it, you know, was it entertaining? All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I would first off say that the show was definitely brilliantly done. I would say that my heart goes out for Esty, the main character. There were some scenes that I personally just couldn't watch. It was too painful to watch for her. She had a horrible story filled with abuse on many levels, emotionally and physically, and a really just just terrible and very heart-wrenching. I would say though that the, the, when, when you watch it, the way that the whole community is portrayed is, it's quite disappointing to, to, to see that this is how the world now sees this whole community as an abusive, a sad, depressing place to be, which is really not the case. I would go very far, very far to say that for everybody there, it is, it is very far from the truth. Um, the people there are beautiful, kind people. They live very happy lives. I think that it's important to differentiate and make the clear distinction between her personal story and the rest of the community. We have to be careful not to, you know, paint everyone with the same brush. You escaped, didn't you? You make it sound like I was in prison. I was thinking, watching it, you know, in the beginning, it says it's, it's inspired by true events. And then I went on, you know, when preparing for this interview, I, I did read a bit. And it, it turns out that a lot about this story is fictional. And that is something that perhaps a lot of people might uh, miss. I, I'm watching this. You, you mentioned, you know, they they are a type of community, and you are another type of community. This is perhaps something also that a lot of people watching this did not get. Maybe you can touch a bit about that topic. There are, for instance, many different groups in Judaism, and what we saw was a specific type of group. There's many different parts of Judaism. There's many different groups. We personally come from a group called Chabad. There is no dis differentiation between any type of Jew, religious, non-religious, or any human being. The Bava Rebbe is the leader in the, in the Chabad movement. And his whole philosophy is the whole world should just be filled with goodness and kindness to others. And, you know, making this world a better place for everyone to live in. And no matter what walk of life you're at, everybody has, everybody could, everybody could live that. Everybody has that same mission. Do you believe, would you say that the Satmar community is a bit more secluded than the yeah. than say Chabad? It definitely, definitely is more closed. It's more to themselves. They keep to themselves, but live and let live. In, in the show, one of the, bigger topics was the, the topic of shiduch and dating. Could you maybe share a bit about, you know, how was it to meet each other? How was your dating experience? And I see you two smiling, so I think that's a good question. <laughs> well, <laughs> our, mothers, our mothers were classmates. This is how we met. <laughs> dozens of years ago. And, um, they actually set us up. So the there, is, there is this so, element of, of some sort of introduction. Of some sort of introduction, yes. So we liked each other. We dated for... <laughs> well, clearly now we're married. <laughs> we dated for three months. But in Unorthodox, they were set up. And then it was arranged marriage. And they were married off. Willingly or unwillingly, it wasn't... They didn't have an opinion. They didn't have... In the real world, I don't think that exists these days. I've heard 
uh, I don't know if this is true, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard, you know, maybe the first date, uh, on, on the first date, maybe there is someone who is, you know, sitting nearby. Uh, this, this wasn't the case. Uh, maybe I'm making this yeah. up. No. no, there's no one sitting nearby. It's very much a personal experience where you two get along. You two well. meet, you go to... A, you go to anywhere, like bars or cafes or... And it's your personal relationship. You take it how you want to take it. So whilst there is somebody setting you up in the beginning, you know, putting you two together, once you meet and once you decide that, you know, that there may be something here, it's you two to take the relationship. So whichever direction you're going to take it. I want to direct this question to you, um, Reza. You know, watching this, there, there was a very strong female perspective, obviously. We're following Esty and her life. She's going through many, many thoughts and experiences, and she's questioning a lot of things about her way of living. Is there, were there some scenes you could identify with? She was a very, very suppressed woman in a very male-dominant, um, as they portrayed it, a very male-dominant home and, and lifestyle. Um, and it was really horrible to watch and it was very hard to watch because knowing that how I grew up and how Jewish woman is seen in, in Judaism mm -hmm. and in Torah is the exact opposite. There is so much emphasis on the woman being, you know, being who she is and the beauty of a woman and a woman feeling good and a, and a woman really using her talents to make a difference in this world. And you're watching it and you see another woman going through such, um, self like like her self-worth was kind of being you know Harsh. really every move was kind of being sh like stripped away from her and it was very very hard the the fact that right after she got married and she had to she had to shave her Shame. hair and i was traumatized from that <laughs> you do have your own hair but you also wear a wig, right? Exactly. I still have my hair. <laughs> Under the chuppah, which is where you get married, there's an idea that you kind of become into a new state and your souls become one between you and your husband. There's an idea that your two souls are born in this world as two halves and under the chuppah, you guys become one. And um, under the chuppah, there's a lot of... <laughs> that's also one. There's a lot of spirituality that's going on and a lot that's changing with, uh, you know, for the couple. Your hair under the chuppah also gets this kind of holiness. Um, from, you know, through this marriage and it becomes part of the modesty law. We, we need to remember as well that a lot of Jewish women do this, but they don't have a wig. They wear a scarf. My grandmother, in a lot of our videos, she That's wears, right. she wears a head scarf. By and the way, we're big fans, Nati, of your grandmother. We love it. I love it. <laughs> I love watching it. You want to talk about the, the sex scene? The way they depicted it, obviously I didn't watch um, can watch it, but Razel. <laughs> Razel was brave enough. Yeah. It was so traumatic. I had to skip. I'm telling it you. It was. It was a very traumatic scene. We can. We can all agree. We can all agree on that. It's very traumatic scene. The way they portrayed it was rape. The, the, I'm saying like. It was horrible. She was literally raped by her husband. There is. There is a strong. There is a strong emphasis on, on, uh, on uh, family life and on having children. Perhaps women don't feel like they are baby machines, which SD did feel in this, in this show. But th there is a strong emphasis on you know, having children and procreation. That, that it, it, is that, would you say that is a correct assumption? The most holy mitzvah is marriage in Judaism and the relationship between a husband and wife on every level, on an emotional level and a mental level and a physical level, Torah sanctifies marriage and it's the, it literally is the most important mitzvah from everything. There's a concept of shalom bias in, in Judaism, which is the idea of peace in a home and the idea of a couple getting along and building an intimacy and building a relationship with each other and a healthy relationship and um so anything against that is really against is against what judaism stands for can i add to that since we're on the topic you know um 
sex is something very private and um, can perhaps be seen as a bit, you know, taboo. And I'm sure we've all had questions about sex growing up, you know, when I was 13 and getting into, you know, this certain age of maturity, my, my mother came to me and she said, if you have, if you have any questions, you know, we can go to the library, I can get you some books. And I, I grew up with my mom. So, and I, <laughs> my father also, you know, he came to me and he said, if you have any questions about, about these things, you can always come and talk to me. Is there, is there a place for that in the show? You know, you see uh, this uh, sex, sex teacher or intimacy teacher come in and educate Esti on the, on the topic of intimacy. Uh, d do you feel you've had, you know, if you had questions, have you had anyone to turn to? Would it be a, a brother or a sister or your parents? Or it, is this something that was, did, do you feel this is, oh, an open topic to discuss or is it more tab or is it more taboo where i come from there are many rules this is done highly different in the time down the roots masha so as you're saying the, the concept of taboo like in any community it's just it's just it's in in yiddish you use the word idol case it's just um how do you translate that <laughs> I don't know. We, we need a translation. I feel you like can't it's, say that. <laughs> it's a concept of modesty. <laughs> modesty, but not taken out of context. You're not going to be speaking on a table, even any sane person in any society, you're not going to speak on the table with kids about sex openly. But um, if someone had such questions, as in, for me, for example, as a child or whatever, I would feel comfortable asking my parents or my older siblings. That is not frowned upon. It's not, if someone has these questions in a society, you know, people obviously, they talk to their friends and it's not like they're having a lesson how to do sex when they're having these, um, first of all, these classes, the way they portray it is <laughs> not how it is. <laughs> One important thing is that it's a class basically teaching you about the Torah, the Kabbalah of yeah. godliness in your marriage and making that and combining, as Rezal mentioned before, as combining godliness into your intimate life and not just making it a mundane thing, but also making it a spiritual thing while you're at it because it's the most spiritual thing there is, is to have intimacy. It's not about having kids all the time like they portrayed in Unorthodox. It's just about just intimacy itself. Having it's a healthy relationship. Having, yeah, having a healthy, that's... And it does, it does. You do learn the laws, you do learn the laws of mikvah. I know they showed the mikvah scene, which was also quite sad for me to watch because Mikvah is nothing like that. Mikvah is a beautiful mitzvah for, for all women, for all married Jewish women, and it actually brings a lot of blessings into your home. Um, there is so went, much when she went into the water, when she went into the water, yeah. Exactly, exactly. and it, it's, not, it's not traumatic like, like, like what's shown. I think, I think that is a very great, great point that you make, and perhaps a misconception that people cannot watching this show and like you said, that in the show, it was very much portrayed that uh, sex is a, a means to, to, to make a child. But as you say, the, the intimacy in itself is a very important part. Tani, I know you for a long time. Have you ever questioned your your way of living you know your belief in in god in your in your religion in the in the acts that you've been taught you know this has you've probably you've you probably haven't been as strong in your faith as you are today growing up this is a process i assume yeah there was a part of my life which i didn't necessarily believe the same way that i believe now and i stand by what I believe in the same way that I do now. And uh, I obviously raised questions to myself, what type of life I want to lead and um, what type of person I want to marry or whatever it was. And uh, <laughs> I'm very grateful and happy that, I'm, that I really came to this place. And one may think, you know, I'm just brought up like this because my parents are, you know, and my mother is 
the shlucha in Sweden, and my father is a rabbi in Sweden, and that's probably, I just want to do the same thing, which is true for its own, but also I, I went through that process by, my, by myself as well. We do have a few questions from uh, the audience that I'd like to raise with you. Based on your experience, do you feel like the life of the younger generation is different from the older generation? So, like in every community and in every society, the teenagers today are probably ahead of the game. If you compare, if you, we saw it with the Grand Adventure, um, for example, Safta, your grandmother doesn't necessarily know how to use the computer or the phone as well as you do. In every society you have that, the older generation is always going to be like a little more, you know. I would say that the more the world is, is progressing and the more the world is coming out with new ideas and new technologies and this and that, um, the younger generation is just, you know, taking those technologies. And again, the, the orthodox life is really to take these new inventions and to take the new ideas and, and turn it into something good. So I, ha I have another question uh, from one of our viewers. This one is from Eloy. Do you feel that there is uh, some sort of, you know, male dominance in the Orthodox communities where maybe the males take more space and the women are more in the background? So I would say, as we touched upon before, the way that I grew up and a, and a lot of religious Orthodox women grew up around the world is very much not in a male dominant society, um, especially in marriage. There are three partners in a marriage, the man, the wife and God. And it's an equal partnership that women have an equal, equal um, um, mission in this world. And women have have unique abilities and unique talents and a unique way of it's it's not about who has more rights and who's you know who um who's greater and who's less great it's it's really it's really not like that and i don't think a lot of orthodox communities are like are like that at all you can see that you know there's facts the old chabad houses around the world it's not the rabbis are sent down as the leaders and that's it it's both the man and the woman there's a conference every single year of 4,000? 4,000 Chabad Shluchot. I don't know their numbers. Circa. <laughs> something like that. S uh, something in, those, in that realm of leaders, women leaders, uh, coming together every year for a conference. And um, they are the leaders of the Jewish people around the world as well. I'm saying it's not just... I would, I would, call, I would call the Rebbe uh, feminist, actually, in the way that the Rebbe spoke about the power and the role of women. A lot of, you know, a lot of people get the question, why is it that the men are the ones who wear to fill in? And why is it that the men are the ones that count as a minyan? And why is it that the men are the ones with this mitzvah and that mitzvah? And doesn't it seem quite um, against unfair. women and unfair for women? And where are the equal wife rights on women? Um, and the Rebbe actually spoke a lot about this and spoke that the women has a higher... Um, source than men when it comes from where they're created from and a higher connection women are a lot of the times more spiritually in tune and they don't need these physical mitzvot to connect them to god because they're, they, already, they're connected. already connected from a from a higher source even that in itself is a huge step from you know it's a huge well, um twist on how we view things why did you leave god expected too much of me I want to take another question. We have a question from Hadassah, my sister, actually. Hi, Hadassah. And yeah, she, she wants to ask, and we talked about this yesterday, uh, about people who have left the Orthodox community, because this has happened, and this does happen. We have people joining the Orthodox community, and we have people leaving the Orthodox community. This is just uh, the way life is. And... The, the people who do, I don't know, first of all, do you, do you know anyone who has left the community personally? Yeah, we 100%. have a lot of friends and uh, even family members that, that left the community and it's not like uh, they're going to be treated any differently. Yeah. Them have you, have you talked to them about, about that process? Do, do you know how that felt for them? How the, the conflict they were going through, could they... Could they speak openly about it? Uh, what was there? Do you think they felt a fear of exclusion? In, in the show, Esti does seem 
to worry about this type of exclusion. And you even have the, the ma- mafia, mafia brother or cousin, Moishe. After her. <laughs> Moishe, who even at the end, he, he, is, he, is, <laughs> he is a very uh, interesting character. <laughs> We, we should not talk about your uh, mafia brothers, I think, then. Let me just say. <laughs> um, he, tells would... her, he tells her at the end, you know, you will never be able to come back. And it's this fear of not being... Sure. Yeah, exactly. That, do you think that does... Could that exist? Does that exist? So I would speak firstly from personal um, experience and what we believe in and the way that we grow up is that the Lubavitcher Rebbe taught us that every single person, it doesn't matter what way of life they've walked, where they're coming from, where they're going, every single person deserves the same amount of love, the same amount of care, the same amount of respect, the same amount of, um, of being treated like a human as anybody else does, you know? We all created by God, we all created in the image of God, um, and there is no space for anybody to be judging another person. And if someone is going on their own personal journey, um, you know, if, 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 if they decided that this is not the life for them, they're going, on, they're going on their own way and whatever it is, the only way to respond and the only way that we're, that we're, that the only appropriate way to respond and what we really learn is really just through love. In general, that is just like Razel said. I'm saying live and then live, and you support anyone if it's a family member, or anyone leading the community. You give them the same love. Nothing changes. They, you're allowed to make their own decisions. They're it's, human beings. It's their which, connection. It's their journey, and it's their connection to God. And, and even their, if they say they have no connection to God, it's not us to judge, and it's not us to. It's their personal life. Yeah. Um, it's their yeah. own. You know what they're going through. I want to say thank you to the both of you for jumping on this call i think it's been really interesting to hear you. about your own experience in contrast to this show that we have watched this very captivating show i really appreciate it uh, to all the viewers watching if you have any more questions i am sure danny and razel or even to myself we'd be happy to answer again i'm going to post a link to their channel so you can reach out to them directly and thanks everyone once again for watching and for joining in. Thank you guys. Thank, and you, thank guys. you guys for sending in the questions, whoever sent in the questions. Thank you guys so much. And uh, hopefully we can do this more often. Yeah. That was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.